This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to do a SmackDown comparison between two top Android tablets, both quite new. Over here we have the Asus Transformer Pad Infinity TF700, probably the longest named tablet ever in existence. And here we have the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. Both of them have their own special sauce. This guy has a keyboard, this guy has a pen. We're going to take a look at them and see which is better for you now. All right, two top tablets, both running Android 4.04 Ice Cream Sandwich. Both have 10.1 inch displays, fast quad core CPUs. They start at 4.99. So how do you pick? And we're going to start with the really obvious things first. And and for the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1, it's the S Pen. It's that active digital pen. This is not just a capacitive stylus. And if you've watched our video review of the Note 10.1, you know this. So it's great for those of you who like to draw, doodle, graphic artists, and for note takers as well. And clearly there's a demand for this because, my God, look at the number of capacitive styluses that are on the accessory shelf there at Best Buy and other consumer electronics stores. And while the Asus has a standard display, no active digitizer here, it has an HD display, big selling point right there, but its claim to fame is really still the separate keyboard that sells for $149 and gives it the transformer name. Looks like a mild-mannered tablet right now, but once you add in that keyboard, you can turn it into sort of a notebook form factor device. And here's that keyboard. If you've watched uh, any of our Transformer reviews, you're familiar with the concept already. So, nice metal casing that matches the tablet itself. Has a battery inside, so it extends run times. It adds a full-size USB port on the side, big full-size SD card slot and the transformer clips into it. So for those of you who are looking for something that's a notebook replacement, this by form factor is obviously going to be it. So obviously very different devices if, if you look at it now and it closes up just like so, carry it around like a little notebook computer. Again, if you watch our transformer videos, and I hope you have, you know already about how that works. So for those of you who are looking for a netbook replacement, uh, sort of a notebook replacement, obviously this can't do all the things that Windows can, it can't run Windows executables, but still, the form factor of the keyboard, the ease of carrying it, the way it protects the screen, this is a big selling point. If you could care less about a keyboard, well, then the Samsung may be of interest to you. And it's not that you can't use keyboards with the Samsung. Samsung makes their own accessory keyboards, and there's a several third-party Bluetooth keyboards on the market that work quite well, and who knows, maybe someone you can come up with a... Uh, keyboard case kind of thing like we've seen for previous Galaxy tabs, or the iPad, that kind of thing. So keyboard's still an option here, you just don't get this particular form factor. And the appeal of this form factor isn't just a keyboard, it's the additional battery in here that increases run times by about 50%. And now for the Samsung special something, here it is, it's the S Pen. Wacom Digitizer Active Digital Pen for precise pressure sensitive input, 1024 levels of pressure sensitivity coming at you. You can see we can do exciting things like, well, draw this lovely bird right here. And you can take notes as well. You can actually just write handwritten notes. You can use handwriting recognition. So, pretty cool stuff here. Also rocks when you're playing Angry Birds. Now let's talk about what's the same. And there's a lot of what's the same here. Both of these guys weigh 1.3 pounds and they're very thin, 0.35 inches. Some of the thinnest and lightest tablets on the market. 10.1 inch displays, Gorilla Glass on both of them, actually Gorilla Glass 2 on the Transformer TF700, which is supposed to be a little bit thinner for better clarity. They both have micro SD card slots, a GPS with GLONASS, Wi-Fi, 802.11bg, and uh, the Asus has single band Wi-Fi, and the Samsung has dual band Wi-Fi, for those of you who love your 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi networks, and they both have Bluetooth. Each of them has USB capabilities, but not out of the box. You're going to use a little adapter. And here's our little adapters. I guess great minds think alike because they are very similar. Two little teeny black things that cost you around 20 bucks or a little bit less. Both tablets have a proprietary dock connector on the bottom, and that's what these plug into. This is Samsung one, and here's your full-size USB host port on the bottom. Same thing for the Asus. Proprietary dock connector plugs into the bottom. USB port right here. The drawback on both of these tablets is, well, it plugs into the bottom. You can see right now if you're using a stand or something, there's no room to plug this in and then plug in your USB game controller or whatever else it is, so you're going to have to find a way to angle it. Neither of these has a dedicated USB full-size port or a micro USB port. 
Both tablets have pretty much the same USB support, works with game controllers, mice, keyboards, flash drives, and hard drives, but where they vary is you get FAT32 support on the Samsung, you get FAT32 and NTFS on the ASUS. That's handy if you have large external hard drives because generally those are going to be format NTFS if you're a Windows person. Again, if you do get the $149 dock for the ASUS TF700, that has a full-size USB port built on it, so you, into it, so you don't need to use the little dongle adapter, and then you're no longer worrying about this big thing sticking out the bottom of it. Both have front and rear cameras. Uh, the, the, the camera on the Transformer Infinity TF700 is one of the best we have ever seen on a tablet, which may not be saying much, but in the case of the Transformer, it is. It's right up there with the HDC Jetstream for quality photos and good 1080p video. That 8 megapixel camera really does the job nicely. The Samsung has a 5 megapixel camera and Samsung never does a bad job of the camera. They're pretty good at imaging. They do, after all, make cameras, but it's, it's not as good as the Transformers and it shoots 720p but not 1080p video. Both of them have good front video chat cameras. I actually give the edge to Samsung for that for a brighter looking image when you're in video chat. Neither of these comes with 3G, at least not at the moment. That might change. No 3G, no 4G. These are Wi-Fi only tablets. You can use your smartphone's mobile hotspot feature, a MiFi, uh, any hotspot, Starbucks or anywhere else, of course, if you need an internet connection, but nothing built in and neither of them has drivers to use USB 3G or 4G dongles that you plug into your computer normally. So how are they different? Well, the big difference, first off, is the resolution. Right now, HD displays are all the rage, thanks to the Retina iPad. Everybody's in a craze to have as many pixels as possible on their tablet. Uh, for those of you who are in the bifocal set, probably it's a little bit less meaningful, because your eyes are not so good when you're looking at things pretty close to you to see the difference in detail. But for those of you who do have good eyes, you will see sharper detail, certainly, on the Transformer TF700. I think it's one of the nicest displays, certainly right up there with the Retina iPad. For HD displays. Very sharp images. Text is very crisp. You don't see any little haloing or jaggies or anything like that. Resolution of the ASUS is 1920 by 1200. Now the Samsung uses Samsung's PLS display, which is their alternative to an IPS display. Has very wide viewing angles, just as wide as the Transformer with its IPS, play, IPS display. But it runs at a standard 1280 by 800 pixels, which is pretty much like every other Android tablet out there with the exception of the few HD tablets that are on the market. I would say it looks every bit as good as the original Samsung Galaxy Tab 10.1. That was a really lovely display. Nice, deep, luscious colors, great blacks, very bright. I would say the colors are also a little bit more natural on the Note 10.1, not quite as cartoony and blown out as the original Galaxy Tab 10.1. And the display is better than the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1, another glorious name there. But the display quality on that, because that was more of a budget tablet, kind of went downhill a little bit. So as 1280 by 800 displays go, the Samsung is really nice. Very bright, wide viewing angles, nice saturated colors, a little bit more of a cool color bias. You can see the difference here. We're using the same desktop picture at a slightly different crop, but you can see how much of a cool blue this is versus on the Asus. Now the ASUS might be a little bit actually too warm in terms of a color accuracy, so it really depends on what you like better. Warmer skin tones when watching movies can be pleasing. Humans that look more human-like are always a nice thing. But they're both pretty nice displays. The ASUS also stands out because it doesn't just have an IPS display, it has a super IPS plus display just like the Transformer Prime. That means very, very bright. If you turn on, turn on super IPS mode, uh, it's very good for combating outdoor light. The drawback with both of these, glossy displays like you'll find on every tablet, so uh, once you do go outside, you're going to notice a lot of glare, you're going to be able to spot every pimple on your chin, you know the deal. Now when we talk about design and build quality, here, here we go. With, with the Seuss's Highline, they go with a metal back, a really nice looking design, it speaks of quality, and Samsung, we know Samsung, they are the king of plastic. So, you get a plastic looking tablet here. Now I think that the white actually is pretty nice despite being plastic, but well, nothing says plastic quite like a Samsung. We do have this kind of metal ring around here that gives it a little bit more of a robust and sturdy look, and the design is uh, more intelligent, I would say. While ASUS was just going for really good looks with their tablet to make it as thin and as tapered as possible to, to fight the iPad 2, which was the design winner of last year, 
But the Samsung, the slightly less tapered edges, so a little bit of thickness here, gives you something to hold on to. It makes it more robust. You feel like if you bonk this on the edge, probably the screen isn't going to crack. It's going to be fine. Likewise, the ports here and the controls are operating on a fairly flat surface. They're easy to control. Your finger's not going to slide off on a taper. SD card slot is well protected. In fact, there's even a door over here. And the docking port on the bottom, again, nice and robust, a flat, solid connection for your tablet. And here's what the back looks like. Again, we are talking shiny plastic, but not too bad looking. Now with the ASUS Transformer Pad with any TF700, they have, they have made the taper less severe compared to the Prime to try to beef up the port some, and they've done a reasonably good job. Here's the SD card slot. And the taper isn't so strong that if you touch it, you're going to shoot the card out anymore. Thank goodness. That's a good thing right there. The headphone jack is still a little bit of a design concern to me because the back of it is a little bit exposed, which means some of the metal connector might stick out if you happen to tap your metal pen against it or something while your headphone's in. You might hear some feedback or something like that. Likewise, the docking port connector improved again over the Transformer Prime, but still, there's a lot of taper here. I know it's kind of hard to see. Maybe from the side you can see it more. So this actually ships with a rubber plug to protect it because there is a lot of exposure going on here. Still, it's robust enough that I don't think it's going to get whacked so much in a bag or case the way it did with the Prime. And our controls up here for volume and for power. Uh, again, the bevel is not so sharp anymore, but still... When you hit the buttons, sometimes your finger tends to slide right down on the bottom. So ergonomically, I give an advantage to the Samsung. But look at this nice metal back. Right? Nothing says quality like some spun aluminum, which is what you get here. And this is the, well, the amethyst gray, they call it. It has a fairly complex tone. In some lights, it does look a little purpley. Other times, it looks like a deep gray. And you can also get this in champagne, which is more of just a straight kind of light silver color. Definitely a nice looking tablet. Given the skinny sides and the way the glass is married right to the edge over here, I worry a little bit more about durability for this guy getting bumped. The other part of design and quality is quality control. Samsung tends to have very good quality control. They're just they're almost as good as Apple with that. Pretty much every product comes out consistently well put together, no creaks, no problems. It is what it is. It does what it should do, that kind of thing. ASUS, well, they got themselves into some trouble with the Transformer Prime, as you folks know, because there were quality control issues with that, Wi-Fi issues, design issues. Um, that has largely been addressed in the TF700. Much better product. Wi-Fi actually works. There's a little plastic area now for the antennas, so you don't have Wi-Fi reception or GPS reception issues. Some folks have complained about having their glass popping up a little bit, not fully adhered on the corners. Our unit was fine, didn't have that problem, no creaks. So certainly ASUS has stepped up their QA, but I think I still feel a little bit more suspicious when I get a transformer for the moment. When it comes to sound, Samsung has a little advantage. The redesign that they also did for the Tab 2 line moved the stereo speakers up front, fairly large grill, so good loud sound that you're probably not going to be blocking with your lap or with your hands. With the transformer, you know there's one speaker on the back or one speaker opening, a little two stereo speakers are side by side behind there. Not very loud audio, they're at a spot where if you put your hand, you're going to block the, the speakers, so Samsung gets an edge for better audio. Now, of course, they both sound quite good if you're going to use external speakers, Bluetooth speakers, or headphones. In terms of wireless reception, you can see that it's doing just as well as the Samsung, if not a little bit better, actually. In terms of image quality, we have the same images loaded up on both of these, and you can see, actually, both look quite nice. Warmer tones here on the ASUS, and more detail, though. You really can't tell until you start to zoom it in. We don't want to go beyond the resolution of the actual photograph, but there's a more a sense of sharpness that you're going to get on that HD display that kind of makes it look a little extra special, and that's really the difference with HD displays. You don't look at them and say, look, I see twice as much, because you don't. They're going to run at the same scale resolution, but there's a little extra popping of detail, uh, noticeable highlight improvements, and that's what you're going to see there. Here, there's just a little bit more sharpness and detail on the roof pattern, for example. But, you know, they're actually both very nice displays. So if you really have a hankering for that pen, don't feel like you're going to be slumming with the Samsung either. In terms of speed, doing just about anything, these guys are neck and neck. Certainly they can handle the pinch zooming and the scrolling nicely. Samsung tweaked the, uh, the gallery function a little bit better, so if you actually have a pretty picture that you want to make your home screen, you know how it's really annoying with Android Honeycomb and ICS tablets, 
the way it has to be cropped two ways, and Samsung somehow has found a way to actually let you use most of the image without having a problem with that. But speaking of quality control, this is kind of shocking, but right here, right now, as we were doing this video, uh, the screen just borked on me, and it's not something that got fixed with, oh dear, another line now. It's not something that got fixed with the reboot. You see this black line that's coming through the image that inverts to white on the black background, and now we've got a second one appearing here, so... Uh, yeah, it doesn't go away, no matter what we do. It, it's... there it is, so... Uh, I guess the quality control issues aren't completely fixed yet. We've had this tablet for more than a month now, and it was actually working fine until just this moment, though. So for the rest of our video, excuse the mysterious lines that are appearing here. In terms of web browsing and web browsing speed, you got the same thing on both. The standard Android web browser is included. You can download others like Google Chrome or Opera, whatever you like. You can see our homepage here. Pinch zoom, scrolling speeds. We do have Adobe Flash installed on both of these, so Flash ads are running. Also very fluid. Actually, this is a little bit more fluid than Samsung. Good speeds. In terms of performance, you're looking at really just about the same thing. The Samsung has that quad-core Exynos CPU, 1.4 GHz. For us in the U.S., this is the first quad-core Exynos product since the Galaxy S3 turned into a Snapdragon product on its way to U.S. shores. And it benchmarks so far the fastest of any Android tablet. It did 53.49 on Quadrant versus 5,000 for the Transformer TF700, both of those being really, really excellent numbers. When it comes to the Sun Spider JavaScript test, we got 1950 on the transformer, which is a very respectable speed. We got an amazing 1206, where lower numbers are better, on the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. The Galaxy Note 10.1 has 2 gigs of RAM, while the transformer has the usual 1 gig of RAM. Honestly, I, right now, given today's apps, I think 1 gig is fine, but it's nice to be a little bit future proof. One thing that stands in favor of the ASUS is that. For the $499 price tag, you get 32 gigs of storage, where you only get 16 on the Galaxy Note 10.1. If you go up to $550 on the Galaxy, you're going to get 32 gigs of RAM, and for $599 on the ASUS TF700, you're going to get 64 gigs of internal storage. In terms of software, you're looking at pretty much vanilla Android here. ASUS, like most manufacturers, has not changed it much. Standard icons, standard functionality, a separation of apps and widgets up here, the shortcut to shop. UI not changed too much. They have done some handy things up here to make it easier to control various functions on the tablet. And here we have TouchWiz. So we have customized icons. We have Samsung's bigger set of customizations for controls. Now those I'll never complain about. It makes life easier when you have the big things there. Application grid. Gives you the transparent background so you can still see the desktop versus the black over here. That may be prettier. This does make it easier to see the icons. Both of them separate apps and widgets up top up here. And with the ASUS, you get all the standard Google applications, which you also get on the Samsung. And the Samsung does a lot of customized stuff. They have their little shortcut tray right here. Now this isn't just, well, another set of quick launch icons. These are actually little mini, almost like widgetized versions of your applications, like calendar, you've got your email, your music player, SNUC. So if I tap that, I can have this running, and at the same time, I say I can bring up SNOTE if I want to take a note, and I can move these around. So they've done a lot of stuff to really optimize multitasking on the Samsung that I like a lot. And the software customizations continue on. A lot of these are some things that you're going to see on the Galaxy S3 smartphone that are pretty cool. We have Smart Stay. If you take a look right here on the icon, you see the little eyeball symbol that says it's watching us through the front camera every so often. So if you're looking at the tablet, it won't turn the screen off. You also have Samsung's uh, photo sharing utility, which is pretty handy. In fact, you can just have stuff go between your Galaxy S3 phone and the tablet. You can set up sharing with other devices as well. And we have their customized music and video players. And right now we can see here's the Samsung video player. It's kind of neat. It actually shows you moving thumbnails instead of just the static thumbnail with a bit more information. And the neat thing here isn't, well, just that you have little animations. But we're going to pick a full HD movie trailer right here, 1920 by 1080. And we'll skip forward a little bit to the good stuff. And then you see this little button up here. You tap that and you've got the video running up here. 
So you've got that sort of picture-to-picture -picture thing going, which, you know, it's more of a gimmick than anything else, but it's just a pretty neat gimmick. And you can also do the split-screen thing. There are six applications you can do this with, so we go for a multi-screen, and we're going to bring up S-Note right next to it, which is the note-taking application. And now I can take notes while I'm playing a video, or I can have Polaris Office running up here, or I can have my email, so you can have two side-by-side -side applications in it. There it goes, it keeps playing. So, Samsung hired a lot of software engineers in the last year, and I can see why, because obviously there's a lot of custom software going on here that, so that even if you say, hmm, TouchWiz, I don't like to look at TouchWiz much, the value-added stuff here is pretty cool. Now, Asus bundles some really useful applications, too. They have their child-proofing app, where you can lock up some apps. They have their app backup, for those of you who want to back up certain APKs or the whole device. That can be really handy if you're trying to transfer apps from one device to another. And they have their super node. Now, here's an application that really begs for a pen. And you can use a capacitive stylus with it, but you can see all these little graphics here. You can take some pretty neat notes here. You can type with the on-screen keyboard, you can draw with your finger, you can draw with a capacitive stylus, not an active digital pen. So a really nice note-taking application on steroids. One other neat feature that the Samsung has is an IR blaster. There's an IR port window up here, and this can control all your home theater gear, and it comes with Peel, an AV remote control application, and also a really fancy kind of TV guide. It's good for content discovery, so as a couch-focused device, the way often tablets are, that's pretty darn neat. When it comes to battery life, we're still testing the Galaxy Note because it only just came out a couple of days ago, but so far the ASUS Transformer Pad Infinity TF700 is winning by about 45 minutes runtime uh, that's going from full charge to down to 10%. So a bit more runtime on this, and obviously if you're going to use that keyboard dock that has the auxiliary battery in it, you're going to go even longer. So, so far, we're seeing six hours of movie playback on the Galaxy Tab, setting it at 50%, bright, sorry, Galaxy Note, setting it at 50% brightness, and we manage over seven hours just with the tablet, not with the tablet, plus the dock on the transformer. If you add the dock in, you're going to get about another four hours of runtime. So that's the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 versus the ASUS Transformer Pad Infinity TF700, both $499 Android 10.1 inch tablets. Both are available now. Both have their own flavor of quad core CPU. They're both very quick. Both run Android OS 4.04 ice cream sandwich. Uh, both will see an upgrade to Jelly Bean. I would bet on ASUS first. They're usually very quick with the OS update. Samsung often takes quite a while to do that. Either way you go, you can't lose. Honestly, it's really hard to pick between these two. I haven't really quite made up my mind yet, but if the HD display, really high quality display appeals to you and the very bright Super IPS Plus mode appeals to you, then it's the ASUS. If the keyboard dock is your idea of heaven and you really want to use this as a notebook replacement, you hate on-screen keyboards, you don't want to carry a Bluetooth keyboard along, that's going to be a strong choice. For the Samsung, that digital pen, if you like to doodle, if you're an artist, if you like to take handwritten notes, if you want to mark up PDFs, wow, there's nothing like it. Really, this so far is the best pen-based Android tablet that we've seen. Samsung's value-added software is really top-notch, and that AV remote is very cool. In terms of build quality, as we mentioned, uh, they're both solid tablets. Uh, Samsung feels a little bit more robust. I trust their QA a bit more. Our poor Transformers display is biting the dust right in the middle of our review here. But you do get things like the metal back, Gorilla Glass 2 versus original Gorilla Glass. And you get an HD Mac My Port also on the ASUS. With the Samsung, you have to use their little adapter. It goes into that port there, just like the USB adapter did, to give you an HDMI out. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Don't forget to watch both of our full video reviews of these products, read our written reviews, and subscribe to our YouTube channel.